Welcome to a video about the AC analysis of a DC to DC buck converter. In this video, I will be talking about the buck converter as both an open and closed loop system in continuous conduction mode. For the closed loop system, I will also talk about designing the compensator. Let's get started. A system can either function in an open loop or closed loop configuration. An open loop system transforms an input control signal into an output through a specific relationship. The open loop based on this block diagram is the modulator and filter. This is known as the power stage of a buck converter. It consists of the pulse generator and passive filter and this is what's in charge of stepping down the input voltage. The purpose of the feedback control system is to maintain the relationship between input and output. The term compensator means to compensate for imperfections in the system. In terms of transient responses, one of the imperfections is the time response or time constant. This delay is the time it takes the system to change from one state to another. And additionally, the rise time is the time it takes the system to reach from 10% to 90% of its steady state value. Ideally, we want a flat non-peaking closed loop gain with a fast transient response, no overshoot and precise output. Closing the loop allows us to regulate the output voltage. We can do this by using a reference voltage and error amplifier. The combination of the pulse generator, output filter, and error amplifier is what makes a complete DC to DC converter. Looking at the overall transfer function, the system would be unstable if H loop equals to negative one because we will have a gain of infinity. If any frequency produces a 0 dB gain and negative 180 phase, the closed loop system becomes unstable. This is why gain and phase margins are important. Margins tell us how much wiggle room our system has before becoming unstable. And we can calculate the phase margin by taking the angle at which the magnitude of H loop is at zero and add 180 to that. The gain margin is the amount of gain needed to have an overall gain of 0 dB at the negative 100 degrees, uh, 180 degrees point. And from a design standpoint, the minimum goal for the phase margin is 45 degrees. However, a positive phase margin means you have a stable system. A greater phase margin implies more stability in the control loop. The modulator is the only block in the system that does not depend on the frequency. It takes in the control voltage from the compensator and compares it to the ramp signal. It then produces a new duty cycle in the form of a square wave with the limits of 0 volts and V in. As the voltage control increases, the modulator output increases. And when the control voltage is greater or equal to the peak of the ramp, the duty cycle is at 100%. If the control voltage is equal to or lower than the minimum, then the duty cycle would be at 0%. The gain of the modulator is calculated by Vn divided by V ramp. Here, V ramp depends on the devices you're using. In order to close the loop, the output voltage needs to be compared to a voltage reference. This error is then amplified and fed into the modulator as the control voltage. First, the output voltage is scaled down by a voltage divider. The computer then compares the scaled down output voltage to the reference voltage. The system reaches equilibrium when the error is small. If the output voltage is less than our desired voltage, then the control voltage will increase. This will then drive the duty cycle of the modulator up until the system is back to equilibrium. 
And here is the transfer function of the power stage. Assuming we are using ceramic capacitors, we will need to find the location of certain frequencies in order to determine what type of compensator to use. Here is a useful table showing how to decide. And for this system to be stable, the phase needs to be under 360 degrees while the gain is above 1 or 0 decibels. And although positive phase margins are considered stable, lower phase margins mean that you will have a ringing in your loop. The error amplifier can be designed with a certain gain and phase of the loop so that we can achieve the desired crossover frequency and phase margin. This is a second order system with a double pole at the resonance frequency and a zero from the equivalent series resistance of the output capacitor. When parasitics are included, the response of the filter may or may not change. However, they should always be considered in regards to making your filter's transfer function more accurate. These frequencies can be calculated using the following equations. FLC is the zero that represents the filter's resonant frequency. FECR or ESR is the pole created by the capacitor's ESR. And F0 is the crossover frequency in which the gain crosses 0 dB and into the negative axis. It is usually located between 1 tenth to 1 fifth of the switching frequency. And for my example that I will show you later, I have chosen my zero crossover frequency to be 1 sixth. And finally, Fs is the switching frequency. According to my results, my buck converter will be using a type 3B compensator. Fz2 and Fp2 are a pair we call lead compensator. They are located so that the maximum phase lead is located at the crossover frequency. They are calculated using these equations. Theta is usually 70 degrees because this is the greatest practical phase lead that a lead compensator can have. The other zero and pole are chosen by using these equations as well. And here is what the Bode plot should look like at their respective locations. Now here are the design documents uh, that I used to make this video. And they are very useful and I really recommend reading them. And for my next video, I will be providing an example and using TINA to run frequency and transient responses. Thank you.